Hello and welcome to another Doctor's Assistant on video. Today I'm doing a review slash my thoughts on um, the film X-Men Days of Future Past. Now, um, yeah, it's kind of funny that I have this on DVD now because uh, I originally, as most people probably do these days, uh, watched it on Netflix uh, and then basically I was gonna buy I was gonna, I surprisingly enough, tried to go to HMV to buy um, a copy of Doctor Who Twice Upon a Time. They didn't have a copy of that, so a while back I ended up buying uh, Wonder Woman because that wasn't on Netflix. But then this as well because I did, yeah, I did know even uh, that I did like this, and um, yeah, from watching it on uh, on Netflix. And um, and it's always been relatively dirt cheap, really, at HMV, or at least the one that I is closest to me, uh, at like four ninety nine. So I just thought, you know what, I might as well buy this if I'm buying Wonder Woman as well. Buy you know sort of two superhero movies, uh, and that. And uh, yeah, I really enjoy it. It's kind of funny how, um, <laughs> kind of funny how the one time that I'm not doing like a Doctor Who review, I pick something that's very reminiscent <laughs> of um of like Doctor Who. I mean you only have to look at the title, X Men Days of Future Past. It's very for lack of a better term, timey wimey and paradoxical and and um and that. So um I love the guy who plays the uh young uh young Charles Xavier, he's phenomenal as well as the kid the the, the person who plays the kid, the really young kid in X-Men First Class as well as this one uh, in flashbacks and that. Um, I think he is the same actor who plays uh, Kazran Sadik in Doctor Who when he, that character, when Kazran Sadik is a kid as well. So that's kind of kind of a little fun fun fact for you there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's about, uh, I think it's two hours, six minute long film, so if time is uh, a problem for you and that and you don't have a very fairly long attention span then this might be a difficult watch maybe I don't know um, obviously if you're not particularly clued up either on the X-Men or uh, either the films or the comics um, I know I have a vague idea of, of some of the comics I have a limited understanding of the comics um, uh, and that but I know of uh, them bre it, like l with little bits here and there uh, of, of information, nothing massively substantial though. Uh, but I have seen pretty much all of the well, not all of the X Men films, but a substantial amount of the X Men films, even though they are very different from each other and that they all feel very different. Like uh, and that and some feel too similar though. Then I get confused between the two. Like for example, for the longest time, I don't, I don't. For the longest time, I didn't think that I'd seen X Men Two, and then when I watched it, I was like, got weird like flashbacks to watching it for the first time, even though I thought that I'd never seen it when it was clearly the second or third time that I'd seen it because it's so similar to the first X Men film, or at least in my head it was. <coughs> oh god, just having a coughing fit there. Uh, but yeah, I mean. I really like X-Men First Class and would love to do like a my thoughts on review of that film. Uh, but other than that one, uh, the only other one that I really, really like is X-Men uh, Days of Future Past. You know, you've got the really young Charles Xavier and that who I think is the same actor who plays Split uh, in Split, the main um, guy in that in, uh, uh, I can't remember the director's name, uh, but I think he's the same actor there, and um, Mystique, the actress who plays Mystique's really good. I think the reason why she w left and quit, I think this might be the f last film she did, was because of the fact that the makeup, understandably so, just took hours to do, uh, and obviously she didn't want to do it anymore, and, that. and also the fact that, you know, it'd be quite cold to do that <laughs> in a lot of scenes and, and certain circumstances. The, um... Relationship between Charles Xavier and, and Magneto always reminds me of obviously the Doctor and the Master and that and I think that's one thing that I do love uh, about their relationship. Like because they are both the same in so much as they are both mutants but they're, they're the opposite sides of the same coin 
basically, you know, which again is, is something that the uh, the Doctor's and the Master's relationship's been compared to. This is the first time we get introduced in the films, anyway, to the Sentinels, even though they don't look particularly like their comic book counterparts, or at least to me they don't look enough like their comic book counterparts. I think in the comics they look purple. I mean, they kind of do in the 70s they do, but then in the future and or present, depending on your perspective, um, they look all sort of just metallic, generic, robot-esque, and it's kind of annoying. The guy who plays Quicksilver, I absolutely adore. I don't know if it's if he was directed to, to, to sort of just have fun with the part, or if he knew about the part a lot, or and, and he was a big comic book guy, or if he just wanted to sort of bring sort of more humour to the part. But I adore that version of uh, the version of Quicksilver in this film over the uh, one we get in Avengers Age of Ultron. I think one in Avengers Age of, of, uh, of Ultron is okay, is sort of passable and surf serviceable, uh, whereas this one is just absolutely fantastic. He just has this sort of charm and delight and, and wonderment about him, you know, like he just accepts these powers that he's got and this ability and I just, I love the fact that like, I get the sense that the actor just sort of embraced the role and just sort of saw it as so much fun, you know, oh my god, I get to play a superhero and just played it like the best way he could, which was just putting himself in the mindset of what would maybe my eight-year-old self say, like, that's the impression I get anyway, but, like, there are those awesome scenes of, like, almost video game-esque scenes where he's, like, zipping about what, uh, all over the, like, sort of, um, room and that, and, but it's, like, slow-mo, and then, but he's, like, listening to music and that. I love characters in superhero films who don't take themselves too seriously, and I think that's why I've always really liked Deadpool. Uh, but Quicksilver here is another um, sort of character who is very much like that. Now, he makes a, a comment about how his mum uh, dated a, a guy who could stop metal or something, or control metal, which might be a reference to the fact that in the comics, um, uh, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are Magneto's kids, and, that, and that's why they have the abilities that they do. Obviously, in the... MCU and that universe clearly not so much, but in the Marvel comics and and that apparently that's where Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch come from. I think if I'm not mistaken, I mean I could be. Um, Beast is pretty cool. I like the fact that he, like sort of, is ashamed I guess of his powers and that, but we do see him use them from time to time, but when he does it's almost like he is repulsed by the reaction that he gets by the public and that um and it's really interesting to see uh the ramifications of first class of x-men first class here where charles xavier basically is a former shell of who he used to be he doesn't like the idea of having these powers and being able to hear everyone's voice and he doesn't want that power nor that responsibility, you know, the pain of everyone else and his own pain on top of that and his own pain and 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 that is too much to deal with. So, because I think, I guess he blames himself for Raven leaving and that because he was trying to control her too much when that actually, the more he was like, I need you, I want you, you know, his grip was more tighter on trying to possess her almost or that's probably what she felt like and that's why she got pushed towards more towards Magneto uh, and that which I think is quite interesting because Magneto was just more like you're your own woman you're a strong independent woman um, but you're your own person you can you know uh, choose to, to stand with me and fight against the humans and, and the people who are going to try and kill our race and that it opens, the film opens quite intensely, quite dark, in a dark place, in a dark timeline where basically all the mutants, and even the humans who side with the mutants, are basically rammed up by the Sentinels and the, you know, worst, sort of, most, worst and most powerful of hu humanity to, they're rounded up by them to be taken to, like, essentially labour camps and either 
the slaves, or if they're trying to rebel, then they're basically getting killed off by the Sentinels. So, um, the plot is, spoiler alert, but the plot is that then the few X-Men that are still around there in the future, which is the present, but then send uh, uh, Logan, as played by Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, to the past and that to prevent what happened and rechange that timeline so that the timeline gets fixed so then the sentinels cease to exist and then obviously that worst timeline doesn't exist although the only th person who would remember that would be Wolverine and that so it's weird to think that they want to do I think they want to do more Wolverine no not Wolverine but X-Men films moving forward but it is weird to think that obviously Hugh Jackman I think has confirmed that he doesn't want to do the films anymore and that and that is just bizarre to me because he, to me he is the definitive Wolverine really he's been doing them for quite a long time and even in the worst X-Men films uh, and that he is just probably the standout bit of said films and that you know he just embodies the character and when you see someone play a character for so many years whether it be the Doctor or you know Deadpool or in the Star Wars universe or whatever sci-fi <laughs> franchise or sort of superhero franchise, you get attached to them. You know, I mean, I can't imagine anyone else playing uh, Iron Man now uh, because of Robert Downey Jr. You know, um, and that. Um, but yeah, like it is weird to think that because he is so good in the role and that. Uh, and supposedly, I don't know if this is true, but supposedly in certain shots he's supposed to be on, a, he's supposed to be taller, so they have him on a box, which I think is kind of funny, so he looks taller. Um, and that, it does have a very big global sort of threat and sense of scope to it, you know, it does feel like a big sort of, um, you know, like in the past that like their actions do have consequences because occasionally you'll have like flash forwards to um to what's happening in the future which is obviously our present uh you know of of the sentinels attacking and and the fact that the humans and all the mutants are being very much uh attacked and you know are being uh you know sort of under threat basically and that and it's all because mystique and old raven uh wants to kill Peter Dinklage's character um, and that, I think it's Peter Dinklage, it looks like Peter Dinklage, um, um, and they want, they want to kill him, or she wants to kill him because he's experimented on, uh, you know, on uh, mutants, you know, but really it's basically a case of violence doesn't end violence, it actually, her doing that, killing him, sparks the government's interest in funding the whole sort of Sentinel um, you know, program, so, you know, that's why Logan goes back, uh, and that, so, yeah, it's, it's a really fun, interesting film, again, it's very, sort of, timey-wimey, paradoxical, so it might throw some of you off, it's quite a long film, so that might be a bit of a detractor, but if you're really big into, obviously, X-Men, or, you know, uh, comic book movies, and you've never seen any of the X-Men, I'd highly recommend this one as a as a first time watch of one of the X-Men films. Um, you know, it's just really well made, it's it's fun, It's it's got a lot of different character moments and highlights of different characters and that, and um, yeah, like, I think that's one of the strengths of the X-Men series, the fact that they aren't just Superman, you know, invincible OP character who can just save everyone or do everything, you know, it is about all these flawed different people who almost mirror uh, the human race, but, you know, but are different enough that humans dis uh, hate and disdain them, or there's a disdainment, uh, or hatred, basically, for, for the mutants uh, by quite a few of the humans, but not all of them, and vice versa with the uh, uh, mutants, some of them like the humans and want to work with the humans, like Charles Xavier, but then there's the Magnetos in the world. Basically, to compare them, to compare the mutants and X-Men to Doctor Who, it would be the equivalent of watching like a, a Silurian story uh, in Doctor Who, but in this case it's a movie, so it's bigger, it's not... 
I won't say better, but it's just bigger in scope and more epic and more bombastic, explosive, I guess, I don't know, uh, and that. But it's still got those sort of smaller bits of humour, bits of drama and emotion and all that that you would hope to see in a, in a, in a, in a good film. Uh, so yeah, I'd, I'd strongly recommend you uh, check this film out. Thanks for watching, comment, rate and subscribe.